Welcome to a funny thing called business. We are four business owners with over 30 years collective experience under our belts. We share the capers and triumphs of running a small business and how we now avoid perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. And today we are talking about visibility. So I have to say, let's get visible, visible. No, you don't have to say that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> So I'm Claire Worley. We also have Kate Curry, Darren Angling, Pete Morgan. And we've got a very special guest today. We have our podcast sponsor, Kate Hollingsworth. Welcome, Kate. It's lovely to have you here. <laughs> I know we are all on the edge of our seats to hear your funny stories. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> oh my goodness. No pressure at all. So guys, uh, we're talking about visibility in our businesses. I know this is a massive topic for lots of business owners being scared about putting themselves out there, whether it's on socials, in newsletters, whatever it is. So let's just take the pressure off being visible and let's share some uh, of our favorite memories and experiences in relation to visibility. Who's going to kick us off? Kate. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, you you <laughs> laughed. You laughed. That was your problem. And I've got a full name, the Kates. <laughs> oh, my God. Has that been at school? Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, OK, so visibility. I used to, like, hate being visible. And when I worked at my old agency and they used to wheel me out for client meetings and things, I'd be like, just pretend I'm not here. I'm just going to sit here quietly. I just had this fear of saying something stupid, saying something that wasn't right or, you know, dropping somebody in it. However, when you leave and work for yourself, you've got no choice. You have to. Mm -hmm. You have to put yourself out there. And through like a series of um, events and things like that, I ended up just going, do you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to have to let it all hang out. This is me. I've just got to just like... Did you let it all hang out? <laughs> However... It that's, not what we're, that's not what we're talking about. No, no. It, doesn't, it doesn't always go to plan, but like I started to go to a lot of networking events and things like that. And where you'd have people taking photos and stuff. And then you'd see they're doing all this marketing for this networking event afterwards. And you see, oh, there I am in the background, pulling a really weird face, mm. looking like I'm smelling a fart or something. <laughs> like, oh, dear. Is this the sort of visibility people want? They want to see me doing that. I'm not very good on photos and things. Um, but, you know, it's you've got to just get over that. And what you see in yourself isn't what other people mm -hmm. see. I think that's what I've, I've learned like. over the time. So when you're like, oh, my hair's a crow's nest. Uh, no one wants to look at that. And then I'm like, do you know, people aren't really going to bat an eyelid mostly. No, just, they don't you know, care what your hair yeah. looks like. No, no luckily. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, what about you? Well, so before... I was a business owner. I worked in radio for 30 years and I was very lucky that I presented a couple of shows that people had heard of and, and did breakfast shows. And when you do the breakfast show on a particular station, you tend to be the voice or the face of the marketing. Mm -hmm. So I have been behind buses <laughs> that have got my face plastered across the back yeah. of them. How exciting. Um, is that, is that, that mega, be... mega bus, is that? Yeah, I mean, oh. mega, mega bus. In fact, they needed two buses to get me a big moon face on, so they kind of did half and half. So... They had to drive alongside yeah, my side exactly. on the road. Yeah, exactly, all the time. <laughs> Everywhere they go, this village is single track, hard luck. <laughs> we can't go there. Um, so, I mean, seeing your face being used to say to people please try this product this yeah. listen to this radio station uh, meant that i kind of went the other way from kate in the business of oh, i've just been i've had that done for too long so i'm quite happy to use the logo or to use a stock photo or mm. to use a, a you know be, before but that's I... not what people want to see. No, they, and they that's really... They want to see you on the back of a bus. <laughs> <They better> be... <laughs> not literally on the back of a bus. No, not <laughs> splattered. Guy... Who's that guy <laughs> hanging on the back of the... Does he do podcasts? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so... It, and it's really only been in the past 
kind of couple of years that I thought actually yeah it should be me that's mm. out front so and what kinda, what got you to that point what got you to the art uh, it needs to be there just mainly uh, intimidation <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just, it, it just kind of gradual realisation of what was working and I, I saw that when I did use my face in any kind of marketing it seems ridiculous to talk about mm. it in that way that always got more engagement yeah. because it is that old thing of people buy from people so they were seeing the person rather than just seeing the business mm -hmm. yeah. very true darren well i made the mistake early on of calling my business darren angley web design so yes so you I, I kind of got a, i kind of got a bit so i couldn't really farm that off on someone else really sure <laughs> changing my own name but then you know that might be a bit extreme so yeah i suppose I, I've toyed with the idea of, of, you know, should I be some kind of like, it'd be like some sort of personal brand, you know, like a Richard Branson type business. <laughs> but then, of course, I realise you have to have a personality to do it. But no, I think... It's just the men who are self-deprecating <laughs> on here, by the way, yeah. Kate Hollingsworth. <laughs> the ladies don't do that. Like me. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, I had to kind of, you know, introduce myself and my business by the same words and you know that kind of people maybe remember that sometimes so it's quite handy from that perspective and yeah you just have to just have to kind of embrace it really mm -hmm. i never really wanted to because i'm quite you know quite shy i don't want to i was gonna say yeah, darren yeah. to be fair yeah. do we see much darren langley no. visibility you don't maybe if he was face. the artist formerly known as darren langley we'd see a bit more of it yeah yeah that's a good idea yeah be, be simple <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> well, I kind of am because my logo is it looks like a little star, and I kind of on Facebook you know, or whatever, you know, the little uh, the little uh, profile photo is usually my little star. So mm -hmm. I think so we should challenge of, Darren yeah. to be a bit more visible as Darren Langley, be, don't you? Mm -hmm. Should we do that? Be more yeah. visible. Yeah, be, more, be visible. more visible. So for me, I mean, it's crazy now. I think I've been doing videos for about five years and that's what I really see as visibility putting myself out there yeah. on video and I remember it was my business coach who helped me become more mm. visible and I remember being on one of our courses which happened to be in Florida so I was on the beach <laughs> I was on the beach <laughs> I was on the beach recording this vid video and I remember my heart was absolutely pounding I was so nervous and scared about sharing this video but then I've kind of realized once I did no one really cares no. no one is like oh my god you're doing video or oh here you are or anything it's just it's completely kind of normal so all the worry that I had was just pointless mm. really mm. pointless mm. so Kate Hollingsworth <laughs> it's it's really hard isn't it I um, loads of my clients really struggle with this this mm. is the big thing they struggle with and it's it's interesting it's because I think I was thinking about it just earlier I think it's because we either because we're so British and we're taught that being too much of ourselves anywhere is like showing off mm. and like being something that we're it is a bit like showing off if yeah. we feel that people are going to judge us because we're out there all the time why are they doing it and also that they're going to judge us because we're too much of ourselves. So a lot of my clients come from the corporate world yes. originally, where especially women and men have been taught they've got to be a certain way, not talk too much about mm. personal life because mm. it might affect their chances in the workplace, not show too much, not be too much of anything. Yeah. So they really struggle being themselves. And I used to find that when I first started, I definitely wasn't, I was, I'm very perky. As you all know, and I, and I know I used to annoy people, so I, I tamp it down, and then I realised well, it's hard work filtering yourself. Oh, it's really, really hard. Hard. Yeah. yeah, I've stopped. It's exhausting. I've stopped. And then, you, and then afterwards, you psychoanalyse like everything that you said, and go like, <laughs> and you do psychoanalyse everything, and you're like. Oh, should I have said that? Have I offended anybody? How did no, I offend them? And it's I just, know. yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah. And ultimately... Did it all hang out? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately, people are going to judge you whatever you're yes. doing. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to stop that judgment. No. So. no. If they want to judge you, they will judge you. Yes. There are people that will judge everything and people yeah. that don't. And I'd rather work with people who don't. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember feeling like I was going to break the internet when I uh, <laughs> when I was doing my videos. I did, you know, like yeah. th this is going to be like so big <laughs> and so business changing. 
and so changing for me. And ultimately, like you put a video out, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's out there. You know, That's nothing true. massive changes. It's just all these things that just start to become a little bit better and easier for you. Mm. So what do you wish that you would know about, you know, in terms of visibility at the start of your business? Because we've all just said, you know, it's taken us a few years to get into being more visible. So what do you wish you'd known in the beginning? Darren, what do you wish you'd known? Well, there's there's a phrase which I think is quite um, <laughs> fundamental in business, and that's this idea of know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. You know, so people, they, they know you, they get to like you, they get to trust you, and you do mm -hmm. business. And that's pretty much the formula, I think, behind most yeah. business. But obviously, people can't know you if you're not visible, if you're not out there. If you're just a star. If you're just a star. Stop, well, I am a star. No, I mean, oh, you mean my logo, sorry. Uh, but I mean, just things like putting yourself out there in, in networking and mm. meeting people face to face and then meeting their contacts and then re meeting the people that you met six months ago, you've forgotten who they were, that kind of thing, mm. you know, that visit, that level of visibility on a personal kind of one to one uh, basis I think is something that I didn't do at the beginning at all um, and just hid behind my website, really. Uh, so, yeah, I think building up that visibility so that you can get to know people, get to get them to like you and mm. trust you and It really is the business. only way, isn't it? it is. Be yeah. more visible so people yeah, can it's the first know step. you a yeah. bit more. Okay. Um, I wish I'd known that it's, it, it is not only okay to be yourself, but far better to be yourself because oh. that is what makes you different to all the gazillion other you know it's people true. that do the same thing as you like we do brochures we do websites we do you know <laughs> I do love logos. Kate's voices I absolutely <laughs> love Kate's yeah. voices but you know you don't want to be um generic because that's boring and not memorable um and uh, I actually went to um I went to a network meeting once um and it was for like a, the institute of directors so I was like oh I really must you know up my game here however oh, I was yeah. late <laughs> um, it was I had to drive up the motorway and I was really panicking, like, le like hunched over my steering wheel, like clenching, clenching yeah. at the, uh, the wheel going, yeah. I need to get there, I'm so late, I'm so late, I'm so late. And I was getting hot and the windows were open, blowing my hair everywhere. And I arrived like massive afro, like <laughs> bright pink sweaty face. I tumbled into the room, hi everybody, I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh. And the, the person doing the talk there was a lady who did video and she's like, and surprise, I'm going to video you all today. And we're going to stitch it together and make this lovely little thing. Thing, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make videos of yourself talking. I was like, oh, good God. <laughs> um, I remember going into the bathroom, I was splashing water and everything. How do I fix this? Oh, no. I've really messed this and up. And where do we find this video? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it will be out there somewhere. It's in I the archives. You. Anyway, a couple of years Links later, I, I get a phone call from somebody at the meeting. I remember you from there. I'm oh. ready to rebrand and I would love you to oh. do it for me. And it just goes to show that... Um, you know, it's okay to be yourself, and you know, maybe that's what made me memorable. Is um... were they your hairdressers? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, sadly not. not Any hairdressers out there? That, please get in touch. She's just jealous. <laughs> yeah, you're just jealous. Absolutely. Yeah. See, I wish I'd have known that it's really not that big a deal yeah. to be visible. I reckon I probably wasted. And I do not like to waste time. It, I probably wasted about seven years. Yeah. Like holding back on the mm. visibility. You think you need to be like professional all the time. Yeah. And it's not what people want or yeah. engage with, is it? And I think for me, it was like lose the ego, lose the feeling of self-importance mm. that, you know, everybody's like busy worrying about what's going on with them. They're not you know, to spend worrying about you and what mm. you look like and how your hair looks and all that stuff. Mm. So, you know, stop wasting time. Mm. Pete, what do you wish you'd know? Uh, it, I mean, it, it's kind of that. Of just, I, was, I mean, because I was so on a personal kind of side of regarding visibility and that thing of people are going to point and laugh or, mm. you know, this is going to break the internet, that kind of thing. I wouldn't dance at weddings. Because I was thinking, people are just going to look at you and go, why is this guy dancing? So it, it's that kind of thing, again, of, of putting yourself out there of why why would anyone want to see me? Surely they just want to know about the business. And this mm. is something we've talked about before, that 
people buy from people of that I didn't believe that in the early days. I thought that was absolute nonsense and that it was just people bought quality and they went with professionalism and things mm. like that. And of course, it's not true. They, no. You know. Do you think this is something, you know, because we're all of a certain age, aren't we, in our 40s? Yeah. Do you think this is something that, you know, just happens in your 40s that you let it this go? It gets easier, or... I think, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 You it care does. less. Yeah, we care less. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kate Harling, Samara. Well, I think you've said everything, all of the above. Um, the only thing I think is that I do, I do say to my clients, you can have boundaries. Yes. So you don't have to share everything. You don't have to be reeling and all that kind no. of stuff. And also you don't have to, share, you can choose what you share. Yeah. So people that, like I share nothing about my husband and his work because it's so different to my life and it's not appropriate. Yeah. And we have different surnames, so it's fine. And I just don't think, I don't, nobody needs to know about that. So you choose what you share. Yeah. You can share enough of your personal life that's interesting for people. And I'm very careful if I share stuff about the kids, it's always what pertains to me. It's usually highlighting some massive error I've made. So I would never share things that I, so you choose how you share and what you share because it affects, it always comes back to your target audience. Yeah. What do they want to know? What will help them? And what mm. stories will help other people? That is such a good point to share because I think a lot of business owners get hung up on what to put out mm. there. And I always just kind of say, you know, imagine you're walking into a networking room. What would you share in there? Because it's kind of the same, mm. but it a is. bit more amplified yeah. on socials, what mm. you're putting out there. And it's just that whole story thing, is it? You're sharing stuff that's going to help somebody else, yes. really. It's that storytelling to say, yeah. oh, this might help you because I did this and I made a massive error. Don't you do it. <laughs> that's the ethos of this podcast, isn't it? <laughs> We've done this. Please don't do this. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Kate Hollingsworth, a brand photographer. She specializes in colorful story-based images that really show off the best of you and your team. With a background as a BBC TV director and over 10 years experience as a professional photographer, Kate certainly knows a thing or two about discovering your stories, how to convey what makes you special and how to create imagery which resonates with your ideal clients. As well as a bespoke library of images, Kate gives you a huge bonus, 30 days worth of posting prompts and ideas for using your fabulous new photos, plus a slideshow to use in your advertising. And you can get a free audit on your website and branding to get you started today. So if you're in desperate need of a profile picture that actually looks like you, or images that shows you as the approachable, friendly team you truly are, or photographs that make your website stand out from the crowd rather than being grey, boring and old school corporate, then you need Kate Hollingsworth Photography. Drop her a line or find her on LinkedIn. Kate Hollingsworth. So let's be dead succinct now, guys. In one sentence, what can you share for our lovely listeners that you have learned about yourself or your business through the experience of becoming more visible? If you're doing a video, do it uh, landscape, don't do it portrait. Good. That's that's my... Do it, or do it in Florida. <laughs> or do it in Florida, yeah, yeah. Get on a beach. <laughs> See, I love trying new things in business. So I say, try something new. You just might find it's the best thing ever for your business growth, for you and your business growth. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Carroll. Oh gosh, one sentence. Um, um, I think, I, I always sort of go, well, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine the world will keep turning that's my sort of motto really yeah. so i think um we put these barriers in our heads don't we about like oh we better, i better do that not do that or say that in case somebody doesn't like it or anything but i found like the more sort of authentic i've been in how i represent my business the sort of more it's grown and the more people have uh, open to have conversations and a lot of my clients are like friends now i enjoy having yes. just you know 
normal conversations with them yeah not just about like right so um let's look at the data how <laughs> 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 to like um, the more you're the south you're this yeah. yourself the more of like-minded yeah. clients and that means can. we can all like um we can all grow our businesses and we can all work together and help each other and we can enjoy ourselves while yes. we do it without mm. having any sort of facade or anything like yeah. that it's really you know we're all people at the end of the day aren't we that was yeah. a lot more than one sentence. It me? was. But <laughs> I, don't know all, I don't know where it all comes from. It sometimes. was well worth sharing. <laughs> See, what just popped into my head as she was talking, do you remember that, um, remember that video that went viral? It was a BBC presenter and his kid came. Oh, through. I love yes. that. Oh. I mean, that went huge, yeah. didn't it? Mm. Visibility. Like, oh, you know, my God, he's a real person yeah. with offspring. Wow. And now, obviously, what we've been through with the pandemic, you know, it's kind of like whatever you, yeah, yeah. your kid came in the room. Mm. It's crazy how something was such a big deal mm. that has become like yeah. that. That's that's nothing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> because there were stories, weren't there, like during the pandemic of partners walking in in the Zoom, like half naked. Yes, I've heard that. It was people uh, not checking their background. So yes. There was a woman who had something on a bookcase. Oh, what, what was that called? So I'm not going to say oh. exactly. A personal device. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Oh my God, on her book, exactly. <laughs> on a bookcase. Oh my God. On a bookcase. She wanted someone to see that. Of course she did. <laughs> That's really That's weird. weird. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> So. Yeah, just on that, I did uh, a call with somebody. It's very different. Well, I mean, is it? I don't know. I was on a call yesterday with someone who had, uh, you know, one of the big sort of uh, Dyson pipe vacuums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hung up, was, wall mounted. Yeah, 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 yeah wall mounted. I was mounted. like, oh my God, I want one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it is a case of, you know, look at your backgrounds, mm. double check. Yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely a, a Hoover, isn't it? Not... <laughs> <laughs> Wow. My, my wife's taken to put in a box of um, personal uh, washing powder just in shot behind me. It was just the mess in my office. She puts it just in shot. <laughs> not a reminder. Is it a hint? Yeah. Well, no, it's not It's not a reminder, but on the Zoom call, it looks like I'm sponsored by Purple, which is ironic because <laughs> my name's Darren, you know, Daz. So. Oh, right. <laughs> I think it's get the bloody washing done, mate. Yeah, I... <laughs> Who's got a succinct se sentence to share? Oh, that's quite difficult to say. <laughs> Three second rule. Count okay. to three, post it anyway. Oh, that's good, nice. yeah. Yeah. It's a bit Mel Robbins, isn't it? That she oh, does count it? to five. Oh, I think no, I can't three. Five, by five I've <laughs> changed my mind. <laughs> and then regret it for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, you can always take it down. If, yeah, if you, you if you review it an hour later and go, Oh gosh, what was wrong with that? So, yeah. But you shouldn't. Just post it and get lots of lovely likes. Yeah. And people commenting. I did that what there was a I did a post once of I'd taken a photo in the background and for some reason when I posted it it turned it upside down oh, yeah, and I didn't notice it at all yeah. and people kind of and it in some way tied in with the post I genuinely can't oh. remember what it was like what it was about um but it was one of those of yeah just get it posted it was fine I'm sure it'd be all right I didn't and but it, I made it out like yes I meant to post it upside down <laughs> yes and course. I absolutely didn't it was a complete mistake, but it worked, so crack on with it. You know? Well, the thing is, it got people talking exactly. as well, so <laughs> what evs? What evs? <laughs> I don't think we can say that anymore. I think Can't we're we too like... old to say what oh, evs now. Oh, no, are we? Yeah. Oh, that's disappointing. Down with the ute. <laughs> Stuff can't say that. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's talk about challenges. Although I don't even like my own question here, but we'll stick with it. <laughs> So what's the biggest challenge you have right now regarding visibility and being visible, visible? Mm. I think it's deciding where to mm. be visible, where to put it. And if we, I mean, we're just talking about social media, which we've done in the past on the, on the podcast. Um, yeah, there's so many options as yeah. to where you can be visible. Uh, and then beyond that, it is a case of, what your budget is and um, you know how you want to go about it. Like if I know we talked about expos, uh, mm. you know in a, in the past couple of episodes. So it is it's just deciding where it's going to be and you know choosing choose wisely. Yeah, choose your favourite platform. Start there. Just yeah. one platform. Yeah. Mm. Kate, 
Hooray. And then, then you get the, the sticklers on LinkedIn going, Oh, oh this is a LinkedIn. Oh, this, is, this isn't Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that. I got that and I posted a photo of the dogs. No. I said, yeah, you might have had a bad weekend. Here's a photo of the dogs. And someone yeah. said, uh oh, not Facebook, though. No. <laughs> I remember someone having a go when I did a video. I did a video, but I was sat in the car. And someone was like, oh, really? Oh, Sitting yeah. in your car? And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Is this a thing now that I can't be sat in the car? You have to be in a professional environment exactly. at all times. It depends yeah. if you were driving on the motorway or driving anywhere. I'd moved into the passenger seat because it's that straight bit of the M6 going through the <laughs> So I just moved into the passenger seat and thought it'd be fine while I do this. I kept one hand, one hand on the phone, one hand <laughs> just kind of steering. It was fine, it was all right. <laughs> See, my biggest challenge... I wrote down, first of all, when I was thinking about this, is cutting through the noise. Mm. And then I was like, although I don't really focus too much attention on um, cutting through the noise and likes and, and all that stuff, it's really, you know, what people are saying to me about my posts and seeing me here and, um, you know, having shared advice and that kind of thing so i don't really worry too much about cutting through the noise and i just kind of think if something doesn't work do something different try something try something new it's fine it doesn't matter mm. i don't think it's the cutting through the noise i think you're right because i think even if you just get one like if that person then becomes your client and yeah. is the right person yeah, I, I find, and I, you'll be telling me off about this, Claire, is time. It's carving out the time to do it mm. and make, because I know, no, I can't say that. Cool. You can say anything. No, I can't, yeah. because I tell them, can you I? You can say anything. The one thing I find is the time, and I know you're going to tell me off about this, Claire, but it's carving out the time and being strict with myself and saying, right, I'm going to spend this chunk of time on. I know that if I schedule it in ahead, mm -hmm. it'll work. But I like to be more whimsical mm -hmm. and post on the moment, and do, so it's really authentic. But <coughs> I tell a, my clients not to do that. <laughs> well, it's a, really good, it's a really good point to share there because so many business owners feel exactly yeah. the same. Mm. They don't want to schedule; they want it to I be. I think you need to do a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. If you're if you've got loads of posts scheduled in, then you know you've got like drip feeding some lovely content out there. When you're busy and you're doing other things, and then you can also like intersperse it with some like you yeah. know more you know whimsical yeah <laughs> yeah. So like I I did one when I was out in the park and I was like, do you know what? How lovely is it that I have a job where I can just take my dog off for a walk yeah. in the park? So I tried to do a bit of a like link back to business somehow. But yeah. the photo was of my dog just like flying through some park, <laughs> and um, and it got more likes than anything else yeah. that I've put out there. And I think it just comes back to authenticity, doesn't it? Yes. So you have to have a mix of like informative things that might not get like all the emotive likes and everything but it needs to be out there anyway and the thing and is the... you know that's it's all part of your personality yeah. that's what you're showing that you know you don't take business like so seriously you're tied to your desk and tied to your clients that's yeah. not what it's about is yeah. it of course not no mm. you've got to be real because people can sniff yeah. out an inauthentic post gotta be real, man. Two seconds. but it's also with the thing with posting and with visibility and again kind of the social media thing is you're right about posting in the now man <laughs> we're so in our 40s but when we're doing <laughs> when we're doing the scheduling that's i always think of that's kind of so that there's a back story or there's an archive mm. so that when someone does come to your social yeah. to check you out that's what they're going to be looking yes. at of, have they posted about this do they talk about their business so you can kind of go look at all this that yeah. i've done i was drawn in by that picture of you upside down exactly. now, <laughs> I, now I look at you properly i see that you're, I, exactly. you're all right <laughs> that maybe i shouldn't is there any way that whenever we speak you can do a handstand <laughs> no not a chance Darren, what's your biggest challenge? Um, Is it that you've got to fulfil our challenge of being more visible? Well, I think, yeah, maybe I will take Kate's advice and put out some videos of me just letting it all hang out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, that's right, I got that right, yeah? That's what you wanted? No. That's what the... <laughs> No, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a confidence thing as well as a time thing. Um, and I do agree with the time aspect, but mm. no, I'd like to do videos. I've always wanted to do videos of... 
you know, some tips or whatever yeah. it might be. But yes. We so need them, Darren, about websites. People, you know, businesses I make are just letting their websites stagnate. We need tips mm. okay, on then. how to keep it fresh. I will, yeah. I will put on my Spider-Man suit and I will get on that video camera. Oh, please. Mm. And let it all hang out. Oh, no. <laughs> let your chips hang out. Oh, dear. So, oh, no. <laughs> moving swiftly on. Can you edit that? <laughs> that all stays in. So what are the silver linings when it comes to being visible? Let's talk about some of the positives that you've had or we've had when we've got over posting about ourselves mm. what some of the positives don't all flood me at once guys you get clients that are, yeah. that are like you you get you get clients that are your, the right clients yes. for you who are more like you yes who will get you who you'll get them and you'll have great relationships yes. yeah. like, like-minded people like-minded mm. people mm. so true so true and it, it just makes business so much more fun i think it makes business you know when we first set out and this is what we wanted business to be like mm-hmm. hanging around yes. a table talking about all funny stuff being able to say what we want with people who we really like this yeah. is what we wanted mm, you're right we have got our dream and that's what comes of being more visible mm. Yeah. Don't, I, don't it, Kate? I think that, um, yeah, absolutely. And I think that it makes you more confident mm-hmm. in what you're talking about. So, like, going back to my very first, like, thing that I said, that, going, you know, being willed out with my old agency to, like, client meetings and pitches and things. And I was like, I must be professional. Oh. I wasn't saying that. And, and so, as a result, I just froze and didn't really yeah. know what to say. Um, whereas now I feel like I'm comfortable not only just comfortable with it but i can see that it's uh, it's not gonna it's not necessarily i feel like it's a negative if people see the real me oh my god they'll run a mile but actually it has the opposite effect and that's when you really uh, can let your passion for what you do shine out and, yeah. you know it's uh, so it's 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 a it's a massive plus it's probably been the biggest uh, realization for me i think of all the things we've learned in business that you just do need to allow yourself to be be you yeah as scary mm. as it is count to three <laughs> and press the button yeah very good be mm. more you darren mm. what's your silver lining um i mean i think i echo that that you know the no like and trust thing obviously the like part does require as kate says the um the ability to get on with people and and be like-minded so um it's a way you know if you put yourself out there in, in, a, in a personal way People, people can kind of either relate to you or hate you and you're fil- it's a filter isn't it yeah so it's a filter then you get the right people coming through mm-hmm. um, into that into that funnel of no like and trust and then you do business mm-hmm. that's the theory maybe but no I stand by it the theory mm. works Pete what's your silver lining about being more visible about not being on the back of a bus <laughs> and being in control where no. people yeah. see you <laughs> Now he's driving the bus. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, although, yeah, metaphorically, yeah, yeah I suppose yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it was metaphorical. I was, it was kind of a, yeah, I took it as a dig at bus drivers. And anyway, forget that. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Uh, I think that the silver linings, it is, like Kate says, that kind of engagement with the right, people that the you know the people that kind of come across what what it is you're putting out there they make that decision and they have that choice as to whether or not they want to work with you based on what they've experienced of you so far uh, and it, it turns out that you tend to get a a, a more suited client mm-hmm. rather than in the early days if mm-hmm. we all think back to the early days i'll have anyone yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah. the jobs that we did the clients that we work with uh you know then there's yes. no way we would take them on now no. um because because they're they're not suited so it is that that kind of that's the silver lining of it i think of it's it's created a a better stream of of people who are getting in touch 
<laughs> so good today, guys. You have been absolutely awesome. Can you tell I've got a small child? Uh, <laughs> you've been so good today. This has been such a good conversation. And I just know our lovely listeners will get loads of tips from this. Let's see you being more visible. Uh, so if you have enjoyed today's uh, podcast, please share, subscribe and review so our fellow business owners can enjoy, be inspired and always keep focused on the fun side of business too. Let it all hang out. <laughs> <laughs>